Everything's going wrong. Today's one of those days where it seems like everything is right in the, where it's supposed to be. Everything's supposed to go just dandy, but it's all everything. So I have like, I don't know, three hours of footage, process footage, and the editor's just not cooperating. So I'm going to get you up to speed here in the hopes that I can get this video out today. Okay, this pole had a gate on it half a gate and we had to take it off because when we got this half of the gate up finally I'll get to that in a second uh, they weren't exactly straight so there was a bend which means somehow that these were too big for the space uh, you know what let me just explain that whole thing this thing was a small nightmare to deal with so we had set this post right and let it dry and everything and the next day it was not set the concrete didn't cure and it was quick set so it should have but we tried to hang this gate on it and it just went ween really bad and so when we tested the concrete just like chipped at it with a garden shovel crumbled so we took that whole thing out and decided instead to get a tube, a really tall post, and just set it three feet in the ground. This one's the same, but even deeper and without the tube. So it's, they're probably approximately the same amount of strength, but we put this one in so that I could brace it at the top to help take some of that load off of this one. And earlier I put this on flat before I realized the hinge will be in the way. So thankfully this one was taller and I could just pop that up, but it, it's not the look I was going for. So you just gotta keep moving on, take a breath and accept it. Nothing's perfect. At least it's strong and it doesn't look like it's moving. It is supporting the weight and it looks like it's straight up and down, good. So then when both of them were up and we put them together, one was bent. They were not flat and flush. There was a little bit of an overlap when they were. In addition to that, the fence picket that I put on this one was a little too close to the edge. So when this was flat, it was rubbing against the post and making it really hard to be flat without pressure. So I took it down. Took off that picket, ran it through the table saw, took off about a quarter of an inch. And so now there is a good amount of space on the side here that it shouldn't rub. And while I had this off, I took off about an inch from the inside here. See, it's skinnier. Hopefully when everything's put back together, when they're flat and flush, there might just be a tiny bit of space between them, which is perfect. I don't know how this happened. I thought there would be more space, honestly. Um, I measured and everything, but you know, I can, I can give myself all the wiggle room I want and it still gets taken away, so I don't know what happened. The only other thing that really went wrong with this whole build is that a certain big box store has their cedar pickets on sale for like $2.50 a piece. When we built the rest of the fence, we really didn't have any choice but cedar because it was 2020. If you try to build anything, if you try building anything at that point you know there was nothing but we have to use it now to match so I'm trying to wait until those come back in stock to finish this off but if it takes too long we'll bite the bullet and pay full price so it's not exactly perfect but I think there's enough room to put a lock on there and that's really what's most important here um, you won't see all this on the other side when the pickets are up because those will be a nice graduated line so I don't think it'll bother me all that much that these don't perfectly match up and I don't think they would continue to match up because of you know shifting shifting poles and all that so speaking of 
this pole over here, uh, it's bending a little bit more than this one. I mean, obviously, this one's in three feet of concrete, so like, what do you expect? This one does have concrete, but just not as much. And it's not really bending all that much. It's not, it's not an excessive amount. It's, it's not like this one was over here. Um, it is enough though that I think when we put another pole eight feet away and cement it in, do a cross brace just like we did over here, it should pull this back and create a little gap. I hope. I also wanted to point out the construction techniques here because that was a new thing that I've never done. If you can see this joint, I'll zoom in. See this? This is a half lap joint. This was new because I've never used a, a dado blade. I got one specifically for this project because that is going to be the strongest joint I could possibly make. For these ones, for the cross beam, I did use pocket holes. Pocket holes are pretty strong, they're stronger than a butt joint. And I felt more confident using that than just uh, popping it in. And I think they'll, they'll, they'll hold up just fine. Oh, the other thing about these cross braces. From what I've read, the proper way to do them is the lower part of the diagonal should be where your hinges are. And so I did that with both of these. Tops at the end, bottom is where the hinge is. So hopefully it's really strong and hopefully it doesn't really move. As far as locks go, I think, well I know I want to get one of the pins that goes into the ground. Maybe one for each side, so they each have their own lock that way from the inside. But then that raises the question of how do I lock it from the outside? Do I need to lock it from the outside? Since I ended up doing that with over there, that whole situation, behind that gate will be, I'm going to put a human gate right here in between those two poles so that we can come in and out from there so if we're leaving and we want to obviously lock the gate we can pull the car out close the gate from the inside and then come out the human gate so it actually worked out pretty well that I had to put that second structural pole in over there but I still want something at the top of these two to hold it and keep it from doing this so I think what I can do... So this is my other gate. And it's got one of these chompy locks on it. I think something like this will work over there if I orient it differently. Because remember, these are coming together like this. They're not swinging against each other, hopefully. But I think if I get it to where this piece sticks out like this, and then the bar comes out like this, and then it'll chomp on. So I think that's what we're gonna go with for the middle, other than the two bars that go down. Beyond that, we really just have to wait for pickets to come back in. I've been checking them multiple times a day. He's been talking about just paying full price, so, I mean, if he wants to, I guess, um, it would be nice to have it done, just so we could like, close it off and let the dogs out which is the main goal here and this is going to be the last cool weekend there is I think it's it's early July so might just have to go that way if they're not back in stock by midweek we'll just get some if they have to be cedar they have to match kind of dug this hole ourselves Kinda, I want to blame 2020 though, at least partially. And also, bougie tastes, because the cedar is really nice. I can't complain about it too much. And it will last, so. Anyway, that's probably where we're at right now. The only other things we have to do are like the wings on either side of the gate to completely close it off, but it's not as hard as building the gate. Plus we need the pickets for it, so. It's, you know, whatever. It, it would just be a skeleton. We will hold off on that until the next video. And hopefully next video, the gate will be done. Thank you for watching. See you then.